Halika dito sa Vermont 888 KT Lugar at maglibang magsaya at mag-arsang isla sa buong maghapon. sa Marcos Highway, Barangay Mayamo, sa Rusod ng Antipolo at katabilang ng Yunioy Gas Station. Ano pa hinihintay mo, katropa? Takbo na! Mga milenyo, pagod ka na ba galing sa trabaho? At gutom na sa maghabong pagtatrabaho? Pero wala kang pagkain sa bahay. Narito na ang sagot mga katropa, ang super manok lechon na papawi sa inyong gutom at siguradong mapapa-anerize ka dahil sa tender juicy na jam mo pa at siguradong malinis at bagong katay buhat sa farm kaya super masalasa at pangmasa pa. Ano pa hinihintay nyo mga katropa? Takbo na sa super manok pantay nyo siniluan at bumili na Baka maabusan ka, katropa. Give this with self of human care. 
one care, we will share our lives to keep our liberty. Eagles Pledge. I, having consciously subscribed to the Constitution and the Eagles Magna Carta of the Philippine Eagles, and aware of my responsibility to my God and country, to hereby pledge to promote and defend at all times the Constitution and Magna Carta and their ideals to the best of my ability and within my power and capacity. So help me go. po sa inyong lahat at tayo uh, ay ginabi na naman eh, wala tayong magagawa talagang gano'n ang uh, ating uh, uh, status ngayon dahil marami po tayong nilalakad ng mga bagay-bagay na talaga naman dapat eh, lakarin natin Okay so mga kaibigan ngayon po ay uh, araw ng uh, Sabo no? Ika dalaw out ikaapat na ng buwan ng uh, Pebrero tong 2023 At uh, yan mga kaibigan syempre po ay uh, ano Pebrero na uh, di uh, 4 10 days to go na lang ay uh, nako Valentine's Day na no kaya naman yung ating mga kababayan aba ay yung mga walang kadate na may maghanap na kayo ng kadate po no dahil mahirap yung on the spot wala kayong makukuha na on the spot na makakadate no kailangan ay ini-schedule po talaga yon hindi ho po pwedeng ora mismo no eh ito sinasabi ko kaya kailangan ngayon pa lang eh magano na kayo no kailangan eh 
maghanap-hanap na kayo dyan. Baka naman, di ba? So, yun po mga kaibigan. At, uh, well, yung mga pinata talaga, particular, no? Huwag yung mga meron ng uh, jowa, no? Yung mga meron ng uh, atyawa. Eh, mahirap po yun, no? Hindi na po dapat yun, no? Okay, so mga kaibigan, ngayon po ay araw na Sabado, ikaapat po ng buwan ng Pebrero, taong 2023, at syempre na sa inyo po ang programang Dalo Barangay. Eh, ang problema po ay parang uh, kasi yung mga kahit na nakausap natin, eh medyo busy, kaya hindi natin sila makakapanayam. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, maybe next time, eh baka doon makakapanayam na natin yung ilang mga barangay captain na mga kakilala natin, kaibigan, no? Eh, sa ngayon po, eh, negative pa. Okay, so mga, di ba yung mga kaibigan, dahil uh, meron naman tayo itutungay mamaya, yung pong ginawang press briefing nila Pangulong uh, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. At syempre po, kasama po si uh, Vice President at Education Secretary Inday Sara Duterte. Abay, napakaganda po pala no, ng uh, mga plano, no, ng mga panukala sa sektor ng edukasyon. At ito'y parang uh, noong pa yata o whatsoever, di ko po alam. So, pa, malalaman natin mamaya, dito po kay uh, uh, kila BP uh, Inday Sara at gayon din uh, eh, uh, kay Pangulong PBBM. Malalaman natin po yan mamaya. No? sa so, itutunghay natin. Yun ang sinasabi natin. No? Mm. Dahil uh, talaga naman eh, nako, mahirap, no? Mm. Yan. Well, anyway, mga kaibigan, at tayong uh, tulad na sinabi natin na talaga namang uh, uh, actually, nung araw po, nung panahon ng ating mga lola at lola, actually, inabot ko naman, hindi po ako inabot ng K-12, dahil siyempre matanda na tayo, eh, nung pong araw kasi, Kapag ka ikaw nag-enroll no, ng unang-una kinder, no, or, or nursery, prep, hanggang grade 6. After grade 6, eh, you know, mag-high school ka na. Eh, sa totoo lang, no, kaya nga nung araw, meron na tinatawag na prep. Ibig sabihin, preparatory, ha, preparasyon. Sumunod, uh, bago mag-grade 1, kinder. Ayan, magkikinder ka muna. So, doon makikita kung ubra ka na at pwede ka nang sumuong doon sa grade 1. Eh, nabago ho yan eh, no? Nung nagpalitan ng mga presidente, nagbago ho, no? Nagkaroon na ng K-12. Samantalang noon, kapag ka ikaw natapos ng grade 6, gagraduate ka na after grade 6, high school, first year high school. At yun ay apat na taon. Ang kagraduate ka ng fourth year high school, college. So, doon ka na sa koleyo. Eh, ngayon ho, hindi. Ang napakatagal ho ng ginugugol ng ating mga batang estudyante para mag-aral po no itong K-12 nga na kung saan tatapusin mo yung grade 1 to 12 after nun tsaka ka pa lang mag-high school nako eh mahirap po yun dapat yun eh ka-college ka na eh parang napakahirap po nung ganun no, ang tagal na gugugun eh syempre ang problema natin dyan yung pong mga pambaon-baon ng ating mga bata. Eh, Siyempre, mga magulang, kaya yung iba, oh, hindi na pag-aaral yung mga nakasi nga kapuso no? sa pinansyal na bagay, sa material. Eh, Siyempre, paano nila mapag-aaral yung anak nila kung wala nang ang pera? Eh, isipin mo, lalo na yung mga ibang magulang dyan, ang trabaho, nagpapadyak lang ng pedicab. At yung magulang naman, yung nanay, sabi na natin, nagsiservice ng manicure, pedicure, or kukuhan, naglalabada. So, hindi ko kakayanin. Kahit sa ang angulo po natin tignan, hindi po kakayanin ng mga magulang kung gano'n po ang estado ng kanilang pamumuhay. E sabi nga ni DSW, ay nga pala, congratulations muna sa ating katropa no, na si uh, bagong uh, talagang uh, DSWD Secretary Wesley, ah Wesley, sorry, Rex Gachalian. Na siya pong dating uh, first district congressman ng uh, Valenzuela City na ngayon nga i-appoint ni Pangulong uh, Bongbong Marcos na siya na pong DSWD Secretary. Aba, eh, yun po eh, fitted at deserving kay uh, Kong Rex Gachalian. Dahil talaga naman pong magaling si Kong Rex kahit na siya yung mayor pa lang ng Valenzuela. Oo, oh, eh, talaga naman yung deserving niya bilang maging secretary. 
Well, ayan, at uh, unang pag-upo niya pa lang ay meron na nga siyang uh, sinabi yung tungkol doon sa ating mga kababayan na walang makain o mahirap na dapat siya nang unahin. Totoo naman ho yun. Dapat ang mga kababayan natin ay eh, meron laging pagkain sa pagkainan. Eh, makikita meron tayong hindi alam na eh, hindi pa pala kumakain yung pamilya yun. Kaya ngayon ay ilaayos na mabuti ni uh, Secretary uh, Rex Gachelian ang tanggapan o ang sangay ng DSWD. At sinabi niya rin na, <coughs> excuse me po, walang uh, balasahang magaganap doon sa kanyang tanggapan o sa buong uh, DSWD bagkos ay yun, siguro ang gagawin ni Secretary kakausapin niya yung mga undersecretary, assistant secretary na magtulungan. Hindi yung uh, uh, magsisiraan, ano, eh, mamumuna, hindi yung ganun. Dapat naman sa isang tanggapan, mapapribado, mapapubliko, eh dapat hindi yung nagsisiraan. Dapat ho dyan, magtulungan, magbuhatan kayo. No? Yung bangko niya, buhatin mo. Yung bangko, mabubuhatin niya. Dapat ganun. Hindi yung sarili mong bangko, ikaw bubuhat. Mas maganda yung ibang tao magbuhat ng bangko mo, di ba? So yun mga kaibigan at uh, yun, maraming uh, no, mahusay naman talaga ho si uh, Secretary uh, Rex Gatchalian at ako'y naniniwala na personal na malaki ang magagawa niya, may tutulong sa lahat ng Pilipino ngayon siya na ay nasa DSWD. Iniwala ho ko doon. Well, sa isang punto po, sa isang banda, yung dati po sekretary na inappoint na si Secretary Erwin Tulpo, eh, okay naman. No? At uh, actually, may ginawa naman. Problema nga lang, eh, hindi siya inapprove ng COA o ng Commission on Appointments. Bakit? Eh, sinasabi na siya raw ay dual citizen, hindi raw siya Pilipino citizen. So, may mga ganun eh. Eh, pero sabi naman ng Pangulo na Mahusay si uh, dating Secretary Erwin Tulpo, kaya ilalagay niya na sa ibang sangay. Sa ibang sangay nila ilalagay, na alam nila na malaki ba itutulong. Ang problema naman sa Commission on Appointments, ano ba problema at ninyo ina-appoint? No? Dahil marami namang may tutulong yung kung sakali, pag-upo. Eh, kung makikita nyo walang ginagawa, at pwede, eh, tsaka nyo uh, ipatanggal do sa pwesto. Eh, pero hindi pe, nakita naman natin, ang pag-upo pa lang ng Sekretary Erwin Turpo, ang dami namang ginawa, maganda naman ang ginawa, di ba? So, eh, sa bagay, sila po yun, sila ang nasa, nasa Commission on Appointments, siguro alam nila yun kung bakit, at uh, inisip nila kung bakit uh, hindi nila in-appoint, uh, hindi natin alam. Okay, sa mga kaibigan na 7.44 na po ng gabi, Philippine Standard Time. At tuloy-tuloy po tayo siyempre dito sa ating programang Tropa. At siyempre po magandang uh, gabi kina, mm, kina Junior Kuntapay. No? Yan ang mga katropa natin. Ha? Sila Junior Kuntapay. E, siyempre, ito po ay mga katropa natin. No? Ha? Kuntapay ba? Tama ba? Mm -hmm. Teka lang ha. Kuntapay. Tingnan natin. Kuntapay. Bawala. Hindi ko nakita. Ha? Hindi ko makita. Hindi ko makita yung kanyang... Uh, uh, ano? Ayun. Nakita ko na. Ayun na. Ayun, 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 ayun. Nakita ko na. Yan. So, yun mga kaibigan. At uh, magandang gabi rin po sa ating mga kuya, ate at bunso ng The Fraternal Order of Eagles at syempre po partikular ang uh, aming uh, region ang Central Luzon Region 45 ayan ayan bang 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 at syempre po partikular ang uh, CL CLR 45 Media Eagles Club na yun po ang aming uh, club no, na pinangungunahan po na inyong lingkod at ang aking Vice President ay wala iba kundi si Kuya Romel Estanislao ang ating treasurer, si Ate Joy Paha. Sekretary po, si uh, Ate Marie. Ha? At uh, ano pinito ni Ate Bachi? Si Ate Marie Salcedo. Yun. 
Oh, at syempre sa lahat po ng mga miyembro, sila ati, ito, nanonood, si ati Janessa Empal, si ati Nathan, at syempre yung kanyang may, ba, ba, ang kanyang esposo, no, si Kuya Ed, si na Kuya Roy Billones, si na Kuya Conrad Oligario, si na Kuya Michael Samson, Rex Samson, at si na Orlan, no, si na Orlan Sigwa. At syempre po si na ati Nobi, Abi, si na... Uh, Richard Tagle, si Eko, si Dennis uh, Trillo, uh, si Poligrates. Ayan, basta sa lahat po na bumubuo ng CLR 45 Media Eagles Club. At yung pong ano, ah, mga kaibigan, yung pong mga license ng mga broker, eh baka gusto yung kumita, gumanda ang inyong karyer, abay, uh, kontakin nyo lang po kami dito sa Millennial Online TV or ay kontakin nyo yung aming ate si ate Janessa Empal tama ba yun ate Jane? para ikaw ang makosop nila mismo at para maipaliwanag mo kung papano ha, ang pagiging isang uh, license broker at kung papano kumita ng limpak 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 sabi nga ng kasabihan ha, yung mga in check particular mga Chinese if you want money work if you want more 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 money Work, work, work. Ganun lang. Eh, syempre, kung ikaw ba, magkukuya ako sa bahay maghapon, kikita ka ba? Magkakapera ka ba? Eh, no, the hints. Kahit na etnem, hindi ka magkakapera kung nasa bahay ka lang maghapon. Mali ba na lang kung ikaw ay online seller? Ha, nagbebenta ka through online. Na kahit naga sa bahay ka lang, kumikita ka. Eh, pero kung gagawin mo, yung katuga ka lang, eh, malabo ka. Malabo ka kung masensya ng boy. Kasi pag sinabi yung katuga, kain, tulog, gala. Iyon ang katuga. <laughs> okay, so yung mga kaibigan at magandang magandang gabi rin no, sa lahat ng ating mga kuya ate doon sa CLR 45. Siyempre po sa pangunguna ng aming uh, governor, walang ibang kundi, kundi si Governor Rafael Ag kawili no eh yan po ang aming uh, governor walang iba no ang uh, matipuno ha ang simpatiko na governor po ng uh, region uh, Celar 45 no walang iba kundi po si uh, Rafael Rafael uh, Agkawili yan yan ang uh, aming governor na ika nga eh Jack of all trade ha oo eh, master of all eh, hindi master of none kasi pag masarap na ni eh, wala eh, ito, all, yun. Mm-hmm. Yan. Mm-hmm. Ayan, at magandang gabi rin, no, kay Ma'am Agnes Delphine, ayan. At kano, ano kaya ni Ma'am Ruth Delphine to? Ha? Mm-hmm. Ano kayang kama- relatives kaya to ni Ate Ruth Delphine, yung pong uh, uh, bookkeeper ng, uh, ng CLR Port, and, uh, uh, ng Barangay Bayang Bayanan, sorry. No, Barangay Bayang Bayanan, dyan po sa Malabon City. No, at uh, bookkeeper po ni uh, Barangay Chairman Ringo Felix. Ayan, at uh, yun, mga kaibigan, at uh, sino pa ba ang ating uh, mga dapat pang uh, kumustahin? No? Dahil alam niyo mga kaibigan, meron tayong mga katropa na talaga naman, katulad ito si Kuya Romel Martinez, no? ng... Uh, Uh, Pilwatch Prime no eh kasi po ito po isang uh, licensed massage therapist no na kaya kailangan ay uh, ano uh, sila naman po ay nagpa-public service nga lang eh hindi pa ganun ka no actually meron naman sila mga nagiging event no na uh, may katulad ng karon sila ng uh, Battle of the Massage Therapist doon sa Pampanga no na ginawa po doon at nanalo po yung kanyang uh, uh, imbento na pangmasahe, pang yung hagubaw. No? So, eh, yun ang ano natin. Siyempre, eh, yun ang kanyang porte. Yun ang kanyang profesyon. Kaya dapat galingan. Ayan, si Don Don, uh, si, Don, Don si Master, nanonood po ng Tineheros Malabon. Magandang gabi sa iyo, ha? Kuya. Salam alaikum sa lahat ng kapatid dating mga muslim. No? Salam alaikum sa inyo. 
at welcome sa programang tropa. Ngayon si Behemot Sarif, kapatid nating muslim yun, na alam ko ngayon ay nasa Lanao del Sur. At syempre yung anak niyang uh, dati nating reporter, si Gazi Sarif. Ay medyo naging busy ngayon, nalag-aaral yung bata. Kaya hindi na natin pinors na mag-report-report. Kaya alam nating busy na eh. Ayan, diba, at least may natutunan siya dito po sa Millennial Online TV at syempre sa inyong lingkod. Actually, oh, napakagaling mag-report ni Gazi. Ha? Sa totoo lang, magaling ho. Hanga ako sa kanya. Dahil sinaulo niya yung uh, kung paano gumawa ng report, paano i-deliver ng report. Kaya mahusay po si Gazi. Kung mapapanood niyo yung mga dati naming uh, program, makikita niyo mo po na meron siyang mga report. Ha? Straight news report. At uh, yung magandang gabi rin kay Miss Jackie Lagpawa The Heart. No, nakasama rin po ano, ni uh, Sir Romel Martinez na isa rin pong licensed massage therapist o LMT no, na magkasama po sila dyan po sa Pilwats Prime. Ayun, katulad doon, yung tinasabi ni Miss Jackie, si Sir Romel Martinez, napakatalinong tao talaga pero humble. No? Wala hong yabang sa katawan, hindi parang hindi marunong mainis. Kaya naman siya ay dapat pagpalay ng Panginoon na nasa itaas. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Okay, totoo po yun, ha? hindi ako sa natatawa, pero totoo po yun, na dapat na yun ang mga talagang pinagpapala ng Panginoon. At magandang gabi rin sa aking inaanak, si Papa George Rojas, mula po sa Santa Maria Bulacan. Yan, katropa, shout out daw, ha? evening sa inyo. So, yan ang sabi ng aking inaanak na si Papa George Rojas, na isa pong... Uh, Tagamas Bati ini kami. Ah, panoorin niyo po yung mga TikTok ni uh, aking inanak na si George. May marami ho siya sa TikTok. Okay, nako na 7:53 na mga kaibigan, tuloy-tuloy pa rin tayo. At yung mga ginang ng tahanan po, yung mga ilaw ng tahanan na hindi pa nakakapagluto, aba. Anong oras na? Kung ngayon yung mga asawa po ay nag-overtime. Malamang pauwi na yan. Eh, kaya kailan pagdating ko niya, may kakainin na. Baka mamaya, tsaka pa lang kayo magsasaing. Tsaka pa lang kayo magluluto ng ulam. Aba, eh, magagalit siya niyo yan. Eh, sana kung papayag yan na habang nagluluto kayo, minamasahin niyo, hinihilot niyo ulo. Eh, paano kung hindi? Ah, wala. Okay, sa mga kabila na lasyete ko, 54. At sa pagkakataon ito, panahorin natin yung itutungay ko sa inyo na isang uh, press briefing, uh, media briefing na pinangunahan po ng ating 17th President of the Republic of the Philippines. Uh, walang iba kundi si President Ferdinand Romualdez Bongbong Marcos Jr. At syempre po kasama niya si Vice President at Education Secretary Sara Duterte Carpio. At doon po, ay syempre, inulat nila, nilatag nila yung mga plano ng Department of Education na magaganda pala, no? na dapat yun ang gawin. E kaya ka tanong ng bayan, kayo ba ay pabor na ipagpatuloy pa ang K-12 program ng gobyerno? O tama na yung ibalik na doon sa grade 6? At after grade 6, high school ka agad. After ng high school ng apat na taon, may college na syempre. At payag din ba kayo, no? Yung iba, ha? ako inabot ko kasi yun, yung uh, CAT. Ha? Oh. Cadet Army Training, tama ba? Yun yata CAT. Alam ko yun na CAT, ang uh, acronym. Inabot ko po kasi yun na talaga naman ako po yung uh, nasa, ano, no? nasa military police. Ako po yung nasa core staff that time. Kaya po medyo... Um, ako sa akin, pabor po ako Naibalik ang CAT ROTC sa mga estudyante E nung yung elementary po kami Nagkabis ko pa nga ako eh. Nagcamping ako, ganyan na saludo namin ano? Tatlong daliri ah, Ganyan yung mga boy scout Kompleto uniform ako noon, talaga naman Nagcamping pa kami noon Ando nga lang kami nagcamping mismo Sa loob ng uh, compound ng school No? At uh, hindi naman kami nagkampi sa ibang lugar dahil noong that time, noong ta, aking taon noon, ay talagang nag-iingat din po 
ang mga pamunuan na school. Dahil siyempre po kami mga bata pa, eh hindi na makasama mga magulang, so umiiwas sila sa may mga posibilidad ng mangyari na alimbawa aksidente or whatsoever. Yun ang iniiwasan nila. Kaya kahit paano, hindi katulad sa school, sa bisini nila sa compound ng eskwelahan mismo, eh doon lang. Siguro naman na eh, doon hindi paano, kahit paano, hindi magkakaroon ng konting problema. Do, dahil na handun ako. At kung sakali man na magkaroon ng problema, ay eh, madali hong makontak at tawagin yung mga magulang ng bata. Kaya po noon, ganun. Eh, pero wala naman no, after ng camping, yun. Nagkasakit lang mo ako. Ha! <laughs> Kasi alam niya mga kaibigan, kapag ka ganyang camping, magtatayo kayo ng tapan yung tent, no? Sorry, yung tent. Tapos, dun po sa pinakasahig nun, eh, yun, misal, naglalatag lang ng uh, banig or whatsoever. Eh, mali ho yun, hindi dapat. Dapat, kung magagawa kayo ng tent, dapat maglalatag din kayo ng matigas na bagay doon sa hihigaan nyo. For example, maglatag muna ng plywood. No, plywood, as in plywood. At saka, tsaka, tsaka kayo maglagay ng kutsyon, kung gusto maglagay ng kutsyon. Para po yung likod, ng hihiga ng mga bata, eh, hindi ho, hinihigop ng lupa. Kasi po, malamig po yung lupa eh. Or simento eh. Eh kapag ka, oh, ang inaalatag lang doon, kapirasong kumot, eh tatagos po. Masisipsip pa rin yung likod ng tao. Eh yun po ang masama. Dahil yung baga po natin na andun. At ayun, eh, sabi pa ni Papa John Rojas, ah, na-share ko na po nung yung inyong programa. May salamat. Salamat sa iyo, Papa George. Eh, ikaw eh, hindi ka na pumasyal dito sa studio eh. Sabi ko siya, pumasyal ka eh. O kaya naman, gusto mo pumasyal ka doon sa Santa Maria. Natatanda mo yung nagpunta kayo sa Santa Maria na yung sa bahay. Yung uh, pinagagawa eh, pasyal ka. At uh, ngayon ay tinutuloy ang paggawa nun. Eh, para kung gusto mo lang ako makita. Makausap pa eh, malapit-lapit yun ha. Okay na ko mga kaibigan, dos minutos na lamang bago sumapit po ikaw ano ng gabi, Philippine Standard Time. At yung mga ginang ng tahanan, yung mga junakis nyo dyan, maka gusto nyo habang kayo nakikinig at nanonood sa Millennial Online TV, ay kumain na kayo. No? Umpisa nyo na pagkain at habang kumakain kayo, itutunghay natin yung ginawang media briefing o press briefing na pinangunahan nga po ni uh, Pangulong Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos Jr. at siyempre po kasama niya si uh, Vice President at Education Secretary uh, Sara Duterte Carpio. At uh, sabi pa sa atin ni Master, ni Master Dondon, abati ito sa lahat ng member ng Foxcom at 71st, huh? hindi, 701, no? Signal bat. Ano yun? Tama ba? Ayun. Ha? 701st signal bat ng Foxcom. Ito po yung mga reservist. Eh, magandang gabi po sa inyo sa mga taga Foxcom. At pinasya-shout out po kayo ng ating katropang si Master Dondon. Ayan po. Okay mga kaibigan, isang minuto na lamang bago sumapit po ang alas 8 ng gabi. Oras sa buong kapuluan. At syempre po, yan po ang oras sa ating uh, buong uh, uh, bans- dito sa bansa, sa buong lugar dito, mapa Metro Manila, mapa Provincia. Eh ngayon po mga kaibigan, itong hinang ho natin, yun nga po sinasabi ko sa inyo na ginawa pong press briefing, no? Na dinaluhan po ni uh, mismong nanguna ay ang ating Pangulong uh, Bongbong Marcos at uh, Vice President Sara Duterte. So mga kaibigan, panoorin natin at pakinggan at pwede kayo mag-comment. Kaya nga tanong ko, tanong ng bayan, tanong sa mga milenyo, pabor ba kayong ituloy pa ho ang K-12 program ng ating mga bata o ng inyong mga anak, ng ating mga anak o ibalik na sa dati na hanggang grade 6 lang at after nun, ay high school na. So mga kaibigan, ha, ito po panoorin natin.
gentlemen, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. and the Vice President of the Republic of the Philippines, Sara Z. Duterte. Welcome you to the Basic Education Report 2023 as we aim to present the state of basic education in the country as well as the plans and initiatives of the Department of Education in fulfilling its mandate of delivering quality and accessible basic education for all. The Department of Education has been intensifying its partnerships with our external partners to ensure that the challenges of education will be addressed. To further understand the current challenges of basic education, may we request everyone to direct your attention on screen for an audiovisual presentation. The challenges facing Philippines basic education today did not happen overnight and will not be solved overnight. Overcoming them requires sustained national political and societal commitment from the highest political levels to all members of the society. Of the many elements of the education system that contribute to the current situation, I would like to focus on two main ones. First, the choice of language of instruction. The decade has adopted the mother tongue-based multilingual education policy in 2013. Overall, the policy is fairly aligned with international good practices, but has faced impl implementation challenges. Second, the Department of Education faces a severe backlog in school infrastructure, which is a result of historic underinvestment, but also regular damages from natural disasters such as typhoons and earthquakes. Learners face the stigma of violence in different forms, both in person or via digital platforms. A number of children report being lonely in school. Furthermore, only a third believe that their ability and intelligence can develop over time. On a broader scale, children engaged in child labor, especially boys, increased to 68% in 2020. Teenage pregnancy continues to be one of the major reasons for dropping out of school. Children affected by natural disasters and conflict also suffer reducing days in school and decreasing their ability to learn because of profound stress. All these factors lead to significant time away from school. This will dampen the country's low long-term economic development prospects. K-12 intended curriculum has a large number of learning competencies 
compared to the amount of teaching time available in a school year. Students could not keep up with the pace of the curriculum given their low access to learning resources. In terms of the implemented curriculum, research data show that teachers do not have time to teach all the allocated learning competencies. For the tested curriculum, the national achievement tests are aligned with the content of the intended curriculum. However, the cognitive demand of the test items was found to be high and would challenge the knowledge and understanding of most students. The review of the attained curriculum showed that learners are not reaching the levels of knowledge and skills expected by the intended curriculum. This starts in the early grades and goes through senior high school. Graduates of the K-12 curriculum lack the foundational knowledge and skills expected for higher education and employment. Teachers are the single most important in-school factor in a child's learning achievement. Teacher quality begins in the pre-service education delivered by the teacher education institutions. So great care must be taken in ensuring pre-service teachers receive exemplary training. Currently, the implementation by TEIs of developmental training programs from pre-service to in-service is weak. Lasting improvements in basic education will not be possible until the challenge to make substantial changes to improve pre-service education is met. Another issue identified by the studies of RCTQ and World Bank is that in-service training is currently not meeting the needs of teachers, lacks coherence, and is not delivering the learning gains the country needs. Our teachers also suffer from lack of a strong system on career progression. Our work with stakeholders surfaced many issues on employability of graduates and lack of collaborations among government, industry, and academe. On the industry side, while many companies are open to accepting SHS graduates, many job applicants still lack life skills. We need to ensure that these skills are well integrated and taught well in the early stages of basic education. We also sought to stop the stubborn practice of employers requiring college units or diplomas for minimum wage jobs by encouraging them to hire graduates of tech book programs or train senior high school learners. While tech book is one of the many tracks that K-12 offers with the promise of employability, its potential remains underutilized. The Filipino learner's journey in basic education is challenging, especially for the most vulnerable and marginalized. But the fact that we are gathered here today is a testament that we are ready to face the challenges together. Thank you everyone. To give us the Basic Education Report 2023, may we call on Vice President and the Concurrent Education Secretary, Sara Z. Duterte. Thank you. Please take your seats. His Excellency Ferdinand Marcos Jr., distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum, madayaw ug maayong adlaw kaninyong tanan, magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Sa bahay, bilang ina, kasama ko, namumuhay ang apat na uri ng learners. Isang kindergarten, isang grade 4, isang grade 3, grade 7, at grade 9. 
Nakita ko po ang iba't ibang uri ng problema ang nararanasan nila sa kanilang pag-aaral araw-araw. Sa trabaho, bilang kalihim ng Department of Education, kasama ko namang namumuhay ang mahigit sa 28 million Filipino learners sa buong bansa. At nakikita ko ang napakaraming problemang hinaharap at binubuno nila sa kanilang pag-aaral araw-araw. For learners at home, over 28 million learners all over the Philippines. These, ladies and gentlemen, make my interest in the future of Philippine education a very personal matter. Filipino learners are not academically proficient. Oftentimes, Filipino learners experience emotional abuse and exhaustion. Some Filipino learners suffer from psychological fatigue. And being academically insecure, many of them fail to meet the standards of the demanding and competitive world. These are caused and triggered by conditions present at home, in our communities, and even in our schools as a result of problems ingrained in our system. This is the truth. Ito po ang katotohanan. Maukini ang kamatuuran sa dagway sa atong kaugmaon. But this is a future we can change. And that is why we are all here. Let us remember that even in the face of death, Dr. Jose Rizal was the perpetual obstinate patriot as he was courageous and defiant before his firing squad executioners. Let us remember that Gabriela Silang, an Ilocano, was unshaken by the grief of widowhood and continued the revolution even after the death of her husband, Diego Silang. Let us remember that in Bohol, Francisco Dagohoy led the longest revolution in history. And let us remember that in Mindanao, the successful Moro resistance was fortified by the unity forged between Moro leaders across Mindanao and North Borneo by the great Sultan Kudarat. These are just a handful of Filipinos whose sacrifices changed the course of our history as a people. They are Filipinos who demonstrated the indomitability of our spirit as a people. Our children are children of heroes. They are the descendants of Dr. Jose Rizal, Gabriela Silang, Francisco Dagohoy, and Sultan Kudarat. Our children are bound for greatness. Yes, it is necessary to emphasize that abilities are important to navigate life successfully. But our children must understand that hardships in life are not overcome by the best minds. Hardships in life are overcome by the strongest hearts. Today is an opportunity for us to renew our commitment to our children and their future. Hard work, hard work, hard work. And only if you work the hardest will our children fly, soar, fight, and win. This is the Basic Education Report 2023. The lack of school infrastructure and resources to support the ideal teaching process 
is the most pressing issue pounding the Philippine basic education. The department is not blind to the reality that there is a need to build, repair, and maintain school infrastructure to accommodate the growing number of learners all over the Philippines. Today, there are over 28 million Filipino learners studying in public schools all over the Philippines. Our latest inventory shows we have 327,851 school buildings in the country. Out of these school buildings, only 104,536 are in good condition. Due to various reasons, there are also 100,027 school buildings that need minor repairs, 89,252 require major repairs, and 21,727 are set for condemnation. Our schools are not calamity-proof. Among the significant roadblocks to our education infrastructure program are earthquakes, typhoons, landslides, flooding, and even armed conflicts. In the Visayas alone, a total of 17,263 classrooms damaged by Super Typhoon Odette are still subject for repair and replacement. Last year in July, I personally visited Clarín National High School in Bohol, and in August, the Triana Elementary School in Limasawa Island in Southern Leyte. The destruction left by Super Typhoon Odette in these schools were heartbreaking, raising the urgency for an appropriate action and collaboration between DepEd and education stakeholders from the local government units, the private sector, and international partners. In Triana Elementary School, a tent donated by an international aid agency has served as the temporary learning space. We need 9.82 billion for the repair and replacement of Odette damaged classrooms in the Visayas alone. For 2023, the DepEd has allocated a total of 15.6 billion for new construction. Our assessment of the department's procurement practices showed cracks that if left unresolved will harm our vision to providing our learners with quality, basic education. These procurement practices also illuminated the concern for transparency and accountability. Our assessment showed that the centralized procurement of DepEd has been hounded by delays in the submission of technical specifications, lack of updated guidelines, lack of qualified bidders, and low participation rate of prospective bidders. There were successful bidders who delivered on time, who failed to deliver on time, and worse, there were successful bidders who failed to make deliveries at all. The procurement practices at the Department of Education had red flags that demanded immediate actions. The creation of a separate strand dedicated entirely on matters of procurement was made to improve the system. This strand is ordered to ensure that delivery of services is done within the period required by law following the processes mandated by law. Our intention here is to solve a problem that has permeated within the system and ensure that transparency and accountability are present. As we confront the dilemma in school infrastructure and learning resources, we looked at the trends in our enrollments and learner data during the pandemic and now. We are implementing post-pandemic programs and reforms. After a significant decrease in enrollments in 2020 due to COVID-19 related school closures, enrollment has since started to recover. This year, we welcomed around 28.4 million learners in 44,931 public schools 
and 12,162 private schools nationwide. But recovery in enrollment is limited only to public schools. We saw the decline of enrollment figures in private schools and eventually saw some private schools terminating their operations. From 2020 to 2022, more than 1,600 private schools stopped operations. Currently, the Department of Education is responsible for almost 80% of schools nationwide, of which 79% are elementary schools. Evidently, there is a wide disparity between the number of elementary and secondary schools in the country. With such a disparity, inclusivity in education remains to be a concern. Despite gains in bridging gaps, learners from indigenous peoples' communities, geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas, Muslim youth, learners with disabilities, and out-of-school youth and adults still require the attention of the community. We need to improve their participation rate in basic education. The core of basic education is curriculum. The ongoing review of the K-12 curriculum has revealed that the curriculum content is congested, that some prerequisites of identified learning competencies are missing or misplaced, that a significant number of learning competencies cater to higher cognitive demands. For senior high school, our work immersion program has contributed to a high passing rate of 90% in the National Certificate Assessment administered by TESDA. However, industry partners have expressed concern that the time a lot meant for work immersion is only for familiarization and not for actual skills acquisition. Today, most senior high school graduates find the need to pursue higher education in order to find employment. The National Senior High School Tracer Study conducted by the Bureau of Curriculum Development showed that 83% of the respondents pursued higher education, while only a little over 10% of graduates were employed. The K-12 curriculum promised to produce graduates that are employable. That promise remains a promise to this day. Our teachers they are the lifeblood of the Department of Education. Without our teachers, our mission to carve a better future for our children will fail. Lagi ko pong sinasabi sa ating mga guro, importante kayo sa pag-unlad ng ating bayan. Kayo ang gumagabay at tumutulong sa ating mga kabataan sa pagpapanday ng kanilang mga pangarap sa buhay at sa pagsakatuparan ng mga pangarap na ito. And to empower our learners with the relevant skills and knowledge, we shall focus on upscaling your knowledge and capacities as public servants. The assessment on the K-12 curriculum revealed the weak teaching methods of our teachers in addressing 21st century skills. Studies done by the Research Center for Teacher Quality, the World Bank, and UNICEF showed that teachers need further support, particularly in explicitly and strategically teaching critical thinking and problem-solving skills. While critical thinking was most evident in the curriculum, it was also the least taught to students by teachers. Instead, lessons leaned towards conceptual or content-based teaching, and lessons lacked 
in-depth processing to cultivate critical thinking and problem solving. Finally, there appears to be insufficient knowledge on developing 21st century skills, including higher order thinking skills among learners. This is not the fault of our teachers whose dedication, integrity, and the commitment to serve Filipino children and the country strengthened our collective effort to achieve our shared dreams for our learners. The sad reality is the system has failed them. This is a system that burdens them with backbreaking and time-consuming administrative tasks, a system that provides no adequate support and robs them of the opportunity to professionally grow and professionally teach, assist, and guide our learners. Ladies and gentlemen, our teachers must return to our classrooms and they must teach. Another alarming issue that we must address appropriately and effectively is literacy. The 2018 study results of the Program for International Students Assessment, or PISA, are distressing, as it is alarming for me as a mother and as secretary of the Department of Education. The study results showed 81% of participating Filipino learners could not deal with basic math problems. 81% had trouble understanding texts of moderate length, and 78% could not recognize correct explanations for scientific phenomena or draw valid conclusions from given data. We can do better than this. And we Filipinos are better than this. But studies like these are opportunities for us to thoroughly examine our system and the defects that hurt our children's abilities. The current state of basic education behooves us all to take a courageous stand and calls us to work together with the intention and commitment to resolve the challenges in basic education. We fail and our children will fail. In 2022, guided by its mandate and the renewed hope under the administration of President Marcos Jr., the Department of Education took steps towards education reforms. We brought our learners back to schools. On August 22, 2022, DepEd opened its doors to over 28 million learners across the nation. Today, 99.54% of our public schools are now implementing five-day in-person classes. We implemented the National Learning Recovery Plan to support the efforts of our field offices in addressing learning losses. Our road to recovery has begun with learning remediation and intervention programs. We continue to engage parents and legal guardians in facilitating learning and regularly conduct home visitations and follow-ups. We reskilled and upskilled teachers and school leaders. We have provided various capacity development initiatives to 226,367 teachers and school leaders. 15,331 teachers and school leaders received graduate scholarships. 17,636 were trained in early grade language literacy. 161,700 teachers completed NAYAP subsidized teaching courses. And 31,700 have undergone teacher induction program. We started the review of the curriculum as we speak. The revised kindergarten to grade 10 curriculum is being finalized. We have also started the review of the senior high school curriculum. We have taken small steps 
and we need to take more. The Department of Education, under the Marcos administration, guided by the Philippine Constitution, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, and the Sustainable Development Goals, reaffirms our commitment to improving the quality of basic education in the country. We know that the road will be bumpy, but our direction is clear. We know that the challenges are vast, but we, Filipinos, are resilient. We will overcome. Tayo po ay magiging matatag. Tungo sa isang bansang makabata at batang makabansa. I present to you our education agenda. Lahat tayo nagsisikap. Lahat tayo nagsisipag. Lahat tayo nais tumalin at gumalin. Lahat tayo gustong makatulong sa pamilya at sa bayan. Lahat tayo maaasahan. Lahat tayo gagawa. Lahat tayo tutulong. Lahat tayo didiskarte at dilikha para sa ating kinabukasan. Dahil lahat tayo ay may pangarap, may gustong abutin, may nais marating. At kahit pa humarap sa libu-libong hamon ng buhay, ang tatag ng lahing Pilipino, mangingibabaw, susulong. Tayo ay magiging matatag. Matatag na kurikulum, matatag na paaralan, at agarang serbisyo para sa edukasyon. Matatag na programa sa mag-aaral at kabataan. Matatag na suporta para sa mga guro. Ang ating pangarap, maaabot, mararating, basta tulong-tulong, magsisipag tayo, magsisikap tayo, para sa isang bansang makabata, batang makabansa, lahat tayo, lahat tayo, lahat tayo, matatag ang pangarap, matatag ang kinabukasan. Sa gitna ng hamon sa edukasyon, tayo po ay magiging matatag. First, we will make the curriculum relevant to produce competent, job-ready, active, and responsible citizens. We will revise the K-12 curriculum to make them more responsive to our aspiration as a nation, to develop lifelong learners who are imbued with 21st century skills, discipline, and patriotism. We will reduce the number of learning areas in K-3 to from 7 to 5 to focus on foundational skills in literacy and numeracy in early grades, particularly among disadvantaged students. We will strengthen our literacy and numeracy programs. We will revitalize our reading, science and technology, and math programs by utilizing the gains of previous programs. The programs will be benchmarked with local and international best practices, consulted with experts, and will be research or evidence-based. We will improve English proficiency while recognizing linguistic diversity we will work towards the goal of English language proficiency within the context of a multilingual nation. We will review the implementation of the mother tongue-based multilingual education policy guided by the basic principle that, among others, learners learn when taught in a language that they understand. We will further intensify the values formation of learners in curriculum and teaching, particularly through the good manners and right conduct and values education in adherence to Republic Act 11476. We will embed the culture of peace in our curriculum to develop learners 
who are peace builders in communities. We will integrate peace competencies such as social awareness, responsibility, care for the environment, value for diversity, self-esteem, positive character, resilience, and human security into the various learning areas of the K-12 curriculum. We will be transparent with curriculum guides. We will share our draft curriculum with interested education stakeholders to help us develop a robust curriculum. We will be transparent about our test scores. We will make our test data available for researchers and analysts to aid us in making evidence-based policy decisions. We will share sample test items with schools and teachers to strengthen the use of assessment to improve the teaching and learning process. We will engage with CHED and TESDA and various industry partners to address the issues of skills mismatch in our senior high school program. And we will need your help to make our graduates employable. We appeal to the industry and to employers to accept our students in work immersions and hire them when they graduate. Secondly, we will take steps to accelerate the delivery of basic education facilities and services. We have recently created the School Infrastructure and Facilities Strand. This strand will be devoted entirely to addressing long-standing issues on educational facilities and infrastructure. We will build more resilient schools and classrooms for 2023, we have the budget to build around 6,000 classrooms. We commit to closing the remaining gaps in school infrastructure with policies to eliminate corruption and insulate the allocation of school building funds with politicization. We will establish fully functional library hubs in our division offices. We will provide schools with electricity. In the next five years, we will work towards providing electricity, especially in our last, last mile schools. We will provide e-classroom packages for teaching and learning. Each package will consist of 46 laptops, two charging cards, two wireless routers, and one smart TV. This will accelerate the integration of ICT in teaching and learning and institutionalize the blended learning program. We will optimize the use of technology, both online and offline, to ensure that learners have opportunities to learn even in the events of a pandemic or other emergencies. We will digitize our essential processes, including our national assessments. We will launch our national education portal, or NEP, which will provide a dynamic one-stop-shop platform available to all basic education stakeholders, such as teachers, learners, and parents. The NEP will substantially cut down the manual process, reduce transaction costs, and eliminate errors due to human intervention. We will strengthen the complementarity between public and private schools through the seamless implementation of the government assistance and subsidies program of the DepEd with the creation of the voucher program management office. Working with private school organizations, we will also speed up the issuance of the revised manual of regulation for private schools. We will work closely with Congress in pushing for the expansion of gospel coverage to include kindergarten and elementary learners. For our BARM brothers, sisters, and learners, we will always make ourselves available to provide technical expertise. We will fully support your school building program and GATSPE direction. The Department of Education is not without legal problems. 
but we will cooperate with government agencies for a swift and truthful resolution of these issues. Effective education governance is crucial in accelerating the achievement of education outcomes. Next, we will take good care of learners by promoting learner well-being, inclusive education, and a positive learning environment. As part of our national statement of commitment in the Transforming Education Summit, the DepEd reaffirms its pledge to ensure that all school-aged children and youth and adults in situations of disadvantage are participating in inclusive basic learning opportunities and receiving appropriate quality education. We will undertake initiatives to provide schooling to many more children and youth in situations of disadvantage, regardless of gender, abilities, psycho-emotional and physical con conditions, cultural and religious identity, and socioeconomic standing. We will strengthen and institutionalize the reintegration program for adolescent mothers, children at risk, and children in conflict with the law by developing inclusive models and mechanisms applicable to both formal and non-formal learning. We will continue to strengthen the mechanism in safeguarding our learners against all forms of discrimination and dangers. Our Learners' Rights and Protection Office has been acting on reported cases ranging from all kinds of bullying, many forms of abuse, corporal punishment, discrimination, and child neglect. We will improve our learning environments to encourage support, discourage bullying, strengthen the implementation of child protection policies, make students feel safe and respected, and make them, including our indigenous people's learners and those with disabilities, feel that they belong. We commit to seeking out mental wellness experts to form interve interventions at the school level. We will also ensure that all learners have access to relevant guidance and psychosocial services managed and delivered by mental health professionals. To achieve this, we will work with the Department of Budget and Management to obtain higher salary grades for guidance counselors and propose the creation of additional items that will focus on providing learner support services, including guidance-related services in schools. We will strengthen our inclusive education programs, including the alternative learning system, Last My Schools, and programs for IP learners and learners with disabilities. We will endeavor that all learners, no matter what their backgrounds are, will be afforded quality learning opportunities and services. We will continue with the establishment of inclusive learning resource centers for our learners with special needs. We will provide assessment assistive mechanisms such as audio assisted technology, braille, and large print test materials to students with disabilities. We will introduce digital textbooks for certain core subjects in senior high school. We will work with the regional offices and our partners to facilitate the development of learning resources for special needs learners, specifically our visually and hearing impaired learners. We will work with legislators and local government units through the Literacy Coordinating Council to eradicate illiteracy at the city, municipal, and barangay levels through relevant policy issuances and community literacy program interventions. We will involve our parents and guardians in the education of our children. Finally, we will give support to teachers to teach better. Teachers are critical to the success of education. 
When they are supported, education quality improves. We will continuously provide professional development programs, including graduate degree scholarship programs to teachers, focusing on their learning area specialization and graduate certificate programs for non-majors. We will provide support in terms of innovative, responsive, and inclusive teaching approaches following the Philippine professional standards for teachers. We will capacitate our teachers and learners in utilizing technology in remote learning to maximize the benefits of digital learning. We will provide training and other learning and development interventions for school leaders, namely the school heads, supervisors, superintendents, and assistant superintendents, so that they can better support our teachers to teach better. We will remove non-teaching tasks and provide administrative officers in schools. We will provide adequate manpower complement in schools, manage teachers' workload, and compensate teachers for unique school challenges. We will fast track the implementation of the career progression policy so teachers get more opportunities for promotion. We will strictly implement the merit selection policy so that human resource recruitment, selection, and appointment to vacant positions in the DepEd are based on key knowledge, skills, attitude, and desired behaviors, and not due to any form of intervention from other government personnel or similar entities outside of the Department of Education. Within the year, we aim to make the new Teacher Education Council and Secretariat fully functional and start working on its mandates, including setting minimum requirements for pre-service teacher education programs in the country. We will continuously advocate for additional benefits for our teachers. We will implement the policy on the distribution of teacher workload and payments of teaching overload as provided in the Magna Carta for public school teachers. We have also requested the Department of Budget and Management to expand the coverage for the grant of special hardship allowance. We will work towards addressing issues affecting the net take-home pay of teachers. We are discussing with the Department of Health for the provision of free annual physical examinations for our teachers. We are also closely coordinating with the GSIS for an improved and superior benefits package for all DepEd personnel. We will resolve issues on teachers' loans, premium remittances, and other benefits. We have committed to meeting at least once a month until these issues are resolved. Lastly, we are looking to provide free legal assistance facility for teachers on matters concerning loan contracts, obligations, and cases. To our teachers, we recognize your zeal, integrity, commitment, and passion. And yes, we also recognize your sacrifices. We thank you for your sacrifices. Maraming salamat po sa inyong dedikasyon. Hindi po namin kayo papabayaan. This is our matatag agenda. This is our roadmap. This is our commitment. Now, please allow me to introduce the team that will see to it that all these commitments and more are met. Please stand as I call your name, but do not clap because they have not produced work yet. After six years, 
we will all gather here together and clap for them. Curriculum and Teaching Strand, under Secretary Gina Gonong. <laughs> Assistant Secretary Alma Rubitorio. Assistant Secretary G.H. Ambat. Please remain standing. Human Resource and Organizational Development Strand under Secretary Gloria Humamil Mercado. <laughs> Operations Strand under Secretary Reb C. Escobedo. <laughs> Assistant Secretary Francis Cesar Bringas. <laughs> Assistant Secretary Dr. Dexter Galban. <laughs> School Infrastructure and Facilities Strand or we call him the classroom czar inside the DepEd, under Secretary Epimaco Densing III. <laughs> Legal and Legislative Affairs Strand, under Secretary Jose Arturo De Castro. <laughs> Assistant Secretary Amanda Marino Grales. Administration Strand, under Secretary Christian Ablan. Assistant Secretary Christopher Lawrence Arnuco. Finance Strand, Under Secretary Annaline Sevilla. Procurement Strand, Under Secretary Gerard Chan. Assistant Secretary Omar Alexander Romero. And the Attorney Michael Wesley Poa. Today, remain standing, DepEd stands before you, heart in hand, humbly seeking your support, improving access, equity, quality, resiliency, and well-being will not happen overnight, nor can it be done by DepEd alone. We need a national commitment and sustained effort from all sectors of the society. Together, we will rally for an improved learning system in the country. Together, we will rally for every Filipino child. Para sa isang matatag na bayan. Para sa ating mahal na Pilipinas. Ang lahat para sa Diyos, sa bayan, at bawat pamilyang Pilipino. Shukran. Thank you, ma'am. At this point, may we invite the President and the Vice President to sign the Matatag Commitment Wall on stage. We would also like to ask our distinguished guests on stage to stand and witness the commitment signing.
Marcos, Vice President Duterte, and the rest of the stage party. And congratulations to the Department of Education. At this juncture, may we invite once again the Vice President and Concurrent Education Secretary to introduce our keynote speaker. May I request everyone to please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency Ferdinand Marcos Jr. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, to our Vice President and uh, Secretary of Education. Oh, please, please sit down. Uh, Secretary of Education, uh, and uh, we thank you very much for that uh, most thorough and insightful report. Uh, and it gives us certainly a baseline. It may not be the best news uh, that we had hoped to receive, but nonetheless, it shows us the directions in which we need to go. Uh, Senate President uh, Mig Subiri, the other members of the Senate who are here today, uh, the Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, members of the Cabinet, the Chair of the Senate Committee on Basic Education, Senator Sherwin Gatsalian, Pasay City Mayor Imelda Calixto Rubiano, Basic Education and Culture Chairman Congressman Roman Romulo, and the other members of the House of Representatives, my fellow workers in government, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is an honor to join you today for the first part of the basic education report. And it is particularly important, as we were noting during this, whilst the Senate, while the Vice President was speaking, that this has been the first conference of this kind for many, many years. And, uh, it is, it, it is, we deem it absolutely necessary that we have such consultations for the simple reason that we all know, must, must know, the situation that we face and the many problems that we need, that we need to solve. And uh, only again by working together can we get that, that, that job done. But at least the uh, Department of Education the Secretary uh, in, in Daisara, our Vice President, has provided us with this starting point. And it is now up to us to take that starting point, at, start, go from that starting point, and to all of the programs that we hope to implement in the very near future for our children. I think that uh, if there is one thing that we took from the comments of uh, the Secretary, Sec uh, Secretary Vice President in Daisara, is that the Filipino is better than this. The children are better than this. And we cannot fail them. And that is the main motivation that we should keep in our hearts. We have failed them. We have to admit that. We have failed our children. And let us not keep failing them anymore. Otherwise, we will not allow them to become the great Filipinos that we know they can be. They will not become the great Filipinos that will be recognized not only by their fellow Filipinos, but many people around the world. And thus, it, is, it once again reminds us that education is the most valuable service that the government can give to its citizens. If there is nothing else, after preservation of life and limb, education comes next. And with that, with a well-trained, with a well-trained populace, with a well-trained and a well, a ex highly experienced workforce, then everything follows the Philippines will succeed. So we in the administration recognize the challenges and issues facing our education sector, all of which must be confronted, 
with an open mind and compassion for those who might have fallen behind over the past few years. I am confident that we will see noticeable improvements moving forward because our Department of Education, that is spearheaded by no less than our hardworking Vice President in Daisara Duterte, is there. Let me also acknowledge and convey my deepest appreciation to the men and women of DepEd who are uh, now in the hot seat because of pinakilala na kayo ni Inday Sara sa aming lahat. Kaya pagka magka problema, alam na namin kung sinong lalapitan namin. Uh, the, but all of you, the associations in the country, policy makers, the development partners, and all stakeholders for your collective efforts and commitment to pursuing quality education for all. I am pleased to see that you have gathered here for this very important event for the benefit of our learners. Your attendance is a manifestation that addressing our educational challenges requires not only a multifaceted approach, but also the active participation of all. It is my hope that my being here signals this administration's determination and commitment to bridge the gaps that currently exist in the education sector. Indeed, strengthening our education system warrants a whole of government, whole of society approach with the highest degree of proact proactivity, motivation, and perseverance. As our nation recovers and bounces back from the losses and adverse effects caused by COVID-19, we must we must now move full speed to equip our learners and educators with the capacity and tools they need to meet the challenges and opportunities we have in front of us. As many of you know, I have been traveling around and trying to bring to the consciousness of our friends and, and partners around the world of the, the potentialities of the Filipino worker and of the Philippines. And at every juncture, I am confronted by the challenge of that the central key to success is going to upskill and reskill our workforce. And that again brings us to the importance of education, not only as a moral, not only as a, a moral imperative for government, but as a practical one, because without that skilled workforce, we cannot compete and we cannot succeed. So I'm gratified to see that that has become a very large part of the plans that the DepEd has for the future. The pandemic also brought to our consciousness the importance of being able to adapt to new and changing realities, as well as unexpected circumstances. So again, we must consistently develop and adopt innov innov innovative paradigms and stra strategic reforms that will ensure the resilience of our educational landscape. We must first act locally in order for us to be competitive globally. We will work hard so that no Filipino is left behind. And to do even better, we will ensure that we are at par with the global standards in basic education. This endeavor will be at the forefront of our efforts to realize our vision of providing quality education for our children and for generations to come. I have previously mentioned that this administration will at no point scrimp on investment in our education in our sector and in our young learners. And I am here today to reaffirm that commitment. We will build infrastructure. We will build infrastructure that will provide our learners, teachers, and the entire academic sector with a healthy and safe environment that is conducive to learning. We will also invest in our teachers. As we all know, that is part of the most, uh, uh, that is part of our improving our educational system. If you saw the Senate President and myself talking earlier, we are already planning on how we get the school building program off the ground so that these deficiencies that we saw in the report will somehow be mitigated.
Our teachers, our teachers are there for, for because it is a vocation. Teachers do not become teachers because it is their job. Teachers do not become teachers because they want to become rich. Teachers become teachers because they have to. It is a vocation and it is up to us to support them in that effort because it, they, they feel the need to educate young people. And we are blessed that we have such teachers and we should hold them, hold them close and do all we can to support them so that they can do to the best of their ability what they have pledged to do. So we invest in our teachers. We, offer them, we will offer them multiple opportunities that meet both their personal and professional needs. We will offer them the support they need in terms of resources, in terms of programs and policies, so that they can effect, perf effectively perform the roles as teachers and mentors of our children. It's my firm belief that quality teachers yield hardworking, productive, and law-abiding citizens. We will also invest in our learners by giving them the right tools and mechanisms that they need in their day-to-day -day schooling. Let us take advantage of the new technologies and innovations that will provide them convenience and efficiency in their pursuit of learning. Aside from advancing their academic competencies, it is also imperative that we hone them to become productive and responsible members of our society. Let us embrace the DepEd's theme, and a fine one it is. Bansang makabata, batang makabansa. And that way, we can produce young citizens who are not only productive, but also harbor genuine love and passion for our country. That is why I have always been consistent in expressing my full support to the DepEd's plans to take critical, bold, yet sustainable actions that will improve our country's educational sector and address learning challenges. It is something that I have been espousing throughout my entire professional career. And at every position that I have ever held, the very first, uh, the very first action I ever took was always to find a way to help our teachers. I know the conditions that they have to work in. I know the difficulties that they have to face. And yet, they come to school and look after our children. That is a blessing. So I stand behind you as we come up with a long-term vision and forward-thinking solutions that will benefit our children. I would like to emphasize, however, that government does not, is not able to execute this task alone. As I said earlier, strengthening our education system warrants the support of each one of us that are present here today. All of us have roles to play. We have parts to contribute. And so let me issue a challenge to you all to become active key players in this effort. Let us join hands and act in unison as we build the best education system that the Philippines has ever seen. We owe it to our children to prioritize their well-being and give them the highest possible quality of education so they may become the innovators and the leaders of tomorrow, not only of the Philippines, but of the world. With our united efforts, I am confident that we will succeed and bring forth a better brighter, more prosperous future for our children. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at magandang hapon po sa inyo. Thank you, Mr. President. At this point, may we request the President to kindly grant us a group photo with all our attendees.
our program. Thank you, Mr. President, for gracing the event this afternoon. Okay, so yun mga kaibigan, napanood natin ang uh, ginawang talumpati, ang ginawang uh, speech ni uh, Vice President at uh, Education Secretary Sara Duterte Carpio. So di ba, ang ganda, ang ganda ng kanyang mga sinabi about sa ating edukasyon na para sa mga bata, no? At yung ilang mga secretaries o other secretaries ay uh, makita naman natin doon sa kanilang mga uh, pangalan, katauhan, ay makikita natin namang uh, maaasahan talaga 
particular nga kung uh, isa lang ang nakilala ko actually no yung si uh, assistant secretary uh, Jen Singh na yun po ay galing pa ho ng uh, Department of Material and Local Government so DILG at uh, naging maganda naman ang kanyang track record doon at uh, talaga makikita natin na talaga naman siya ay nagtrabaho doon ginawa niya ang kanyang tungkulin bilang Uh, under secretary ng uh, oh, uh, assistant secretary ng DILG Okay mga kaibigan ng katid sa atin sa oras na alas 9.17 po ng gabi for Philippine Standard Time at uh, pasamantala po ay uh, magpapalam muna tayo no? medyo gabi na at muli tayo magbabalik bukas para naman po sa programang mga agila ah, ng bagong milenyo Siyempre po, katatampukan po yan ng uh, CLR45 Media Eagles Club. Uh, ewan ko lang kung pupunta bukas si uh, Kuya Michael Samson at ewan ko kung pupunta si Ate Janessa Empal o si Michael Garcia. Uh, ito sa kanilang dalawa kung sino man. Okay, so bago tayo itong ngayon magpala, maraming salamat ulit sa panonood ng ating mga katropa pips, ng ating mga kabarangay. So, unang-una na itong si... Uh, Uh, ate Janessa Empal, siya unang nanood. At si Utol uh, Dondon, si Master. At si Ma'am Jacqueline Nagpawadahar ng uh, uh, Pilwats Prime, no? ng uh, isang LMT. At siyempre sa aking ilalak, si Papa George, no? at uh, si Chris Humadas. Maraming salamat, Chris. At uh, sa panonood. At siyempre si Kuya Jonas Mariano ng Vermont Triple Eight. Diyan po sa may uh, sumulong, um, ano, uh, sumulong highway ba? Diyan po sa may Antipolo Rizal. At kay Kuya Ricky Del Rosario ng Malabon PNP at kay Ate Luningning Pahayag ng Barangay Bayan Bayanan dyan sa Malabon City at kay din si Bro Enteng Diaz ng uh, Barangay Tagalag dyan sa Valenzuela. Maraming salamat siya Bro Enteng. At ang ating boss na Sandigang Bayan, si Boss Robert Steve Esteban. At si Kamariano Herson, ang lokal na uh, nabal. Maraming salamat. At si Kuya Leo Bicaldo, ayan, ang presidente po ng uh, CLR 45 Blackhawk Eagles Club. Ayan, maraming salamat siyo Kuya Leo. At mapagpalang gabi sa iyo. At siya po si Kuya uh, Darius Mariano. No? Yung isa pa nating kuya, eh, nakita ko kanina, eh, nanood siya. Ha? Ayun, teka muna. Ha? Nakita ko si Kuya Darius yan. Eh, oh. ha? At, uh, ato? Ayan. Magandang gabi raw, ano? pa-shoutout daw ha? sa mga taga-subaybay ng programang uh, tropa. Actually, hindi tropa to, Kuya Darius. Dalo Barangay pala, no? sorry. Nagkamali rin ako, Dalo Barangay kasi every Saturday yun eh. Uh, baka sa susunod ng mga Sabado ay makakapanayam na tayo ng uh, Barangay Chairman o Kagawad. No? At mabuhay daw ang mga tunay na agila at nagkakaisang agila. Ha? We fly as one, sabi niya. Ayun, maraming salamat tayo, Darius, at uh, magandang gabi. Ano yun? Sabi ni uh, Mariano Herson, Tambayan ni Kuya Enteng kay Kuya sigurado mura na at masarap pa. Uh, ano yun? <laughs> ano yan, Tol? Hindi ko yata alam yan. Hindi ko mag-get. Anyway, mga kaibigan, muli po ako nyo naging kasama, kajami, katropa, ha? kakosa, kakuya, kaate, kabarangay. Siyempre po dito po sa programang Dalaw Barangay, Siyempre, dito lang sa Millennial Online TV. Ako po yung lingkod, Rosel Lopez. Magandang gabi, Pilipinas, at mapayapang magdamag. Magandang gabi po. Barangay Pangunahing ngunit ng pamahalang lokal kung saan dito pinag-uusapan ang bawat sigalong ng mga residente ng bawat barangay. 
Dito rin pinag-uusapan ng mga piling halang na opisyal na barangay ang mga proyekto para sa kanilang barangay. Kumustahin natin ang panunungkula ni Kapitan dito sa Dano Barangay sa Millennial Online TV Worldwide ang katropa ng bawat barangay. At yung sinatapos sa ating uh, pagpupulong. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo at uh, tapos na po ang ating uh, session. Enjoy na po tayo. Ikaw ba'y nag-iisa? Nalulungkot. Dahil iliyan at ibinagpalit. Ngayon ko, ngayon niya mahal. O ngayon, itype sa inyong mga cellphone, Facebook o YouTube man, ang Merenyang Online TV. Dahil nasa Merenyang Online TV na ang online haralista ng bago Merenyo, si Randall Villanos. Sana'y di magpagi Dati ang araw ng tipang bata sa piling inanay Nais kong mauli ang awi ni ng mahal You are the Makes me happy when everything else turns to gray. Walk on through the rain. Walk on through the rain. Though you dream. Haharamahin kayo ni Randel ng iba't ibang abwiti para maibsan ang iyong inip at kalungkutan ay nasaan man kayo. Hanggang sa tumanda. At pwede rin kayong makiduit kay Randwell tuwing Webis ng hapon. Ano pa rin hihintay nyo mga kamilay nyo? Tawag na! Nagbabasa ka pa ba ng dyaryo? O nakikinig ka pa ba ng radyo? Kung ngayon, lahat siya ay mapapakinggan nyo na sa inyong mga selfo. Dahil online na tayo, mga kamilenyo. Kaya, manood, makinig, dito sa Millennial Online TV. Riders, sa Kaya, i-follow, like, subscribe, at i-share na, mga katropa. Now, uh, <clears throat> Talakay. The biggest destruction of dangerous drugs worth one. Rebisahin, opinion, malawakin, aksyonan. Kasama si Rosel Lopez, ang inyong katropa sa pagbabalita. Dito lang sa Millennial Online TV. Tutok na mga katropa! Hanap mo ba ay Unwind Ventures? Tara nang mamangha sa mga tanawin. Ano ba lang yung track?
travel rules. Dadalhin namin kayo. Saan wa adventures at saya? Dito lang sa wow biyahe. Kaya wow, di ba? Abangan, dito lang sa Millennial Online TV. Pinaiting, pinalakas, ang bagong news online TV ng bagong milenyo. Millennial Online TV Ang katropa mo sa pagbabalita Hi! This is Sokang Hilary Kedon uh, Nananawagan ako sa ating mga katropa no? at mga kaibigan, mga kababayan na palaging tumutok sa Millennial Online, Millennial Online TV at yan ay tinangunahan at yan ay uh, pinakasiwaan ng aking kaibigan na si Rosel at uh, ang mga nanunood dyan ay hindi bobo <laughs> Mga kababayan ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas Thank you.